Hey, what's up guys? Welcome into this week's video. It's going to be a little different this week as we're talking about a plague that's really affecting our public lands and the places that we love to go shoot as landscape photographers. All that coming up. Hey, what's up guys? David Johnson here and welcome into the video. On this channel, we talk landscape photography. So if you're into landscape photography at all, consider subscribing to this channel. Now in this video, we're talking about a plague, a plight that's really affecting nature and the public lands that we love to go shoot. And that is not knowing a lot about the places that we go to shoot and not educating the public on those places. Now there's a lot of videos swirling around and a lot of comments on Instagram swirling around about do you share locations or do you not? Personally, I share vague locations, general areas that you can go shoot so that you can explore and find the same areas and have that fun, but also to protect some of the really frail and delicate areas that are in nature and that can't handle a ton of foot traffic. A lot of people have differing opinions on this. I stick to that side. Some people share geotag locations and really go into depth on the places that they go visit, even creating some things like destination ebooks and location ebooks. Today we're going to talk about a stand that you can take, a way that you can help our natural areas from people who don't respect them, from people who don't recognize that nature is fragile and it can be extremely damaged by some things. Even things like recently we've seen in Joshua Tree National Park, Death Valley National Park, where they cut down some Joshua trees, created their own roads. In Death Valley, someone drove out onto the racetrack and did donuts. A landscape where just a single human footprint after a rain can last several years before regenerated by the Earth's crust. So we really need to think about how we're making these places popular on social media, Instagram in particular, in videos like these, YouTube videos, and when I go out and shoot locations talking about you know, how can you protect the places that you go out and shoot, being careful around certain areas. We really need to think about those a little bit first. Now, linked below, I have a website that you can join for free called Nature First. This is an alliance of responsible photographers all over the world that you can join and take a stand in to help protect these natural areas that we love to go shoot. And you can do this through a variety of ways. You can do this through education, through knowledge of sharing. If you're a workshop leader and you like to lead photography workshops, you can become a nature first advocate of being a workshop leader that teaches these nature first principles that help protect these lands, not necessarily keeping them from people, but showing people how they can visit and protect them as well, and really educate the public on their actions have detrimental impacts on the places that we like to go out and shoot. Now, this isn't always a popular stance, but it's one I'm willing to take as a nature photographer and one that I'm going to take as a responsible nature photographer to protect the places that I love to shoot so that other people can go visit those and see the exact same thing that I saw, the beauty, and not see graffiti, not see trees cut down, not see footprints in the wrong places. We need to learn as photographers to respect the places that we go out and shoot. And this is a great way that you can do that, learn these principles and share them as well. So we're gonna go through the seven nature first principles here for you guys to learn so that when you're sharing images, when you're teaching locations, when you're taking people out, you can spread the word and share these as well. And also join Nature's First Alliance for free. You won't be spammed or anything like that. It's free to join. It just shows our solidarity and provides some education for how to protect nature. So number one, prioritize the well-being of nature over photography. Never sacrificing a landscape just for an image. Never pulling down a limb that's in your composition, that's in your foreground and is distracting. Never crossing over a rope or a trail to get to a place that may be a slightly better composition and you may be trampling like some wildflowers or something that can't regrow and grow back next year. So never sacrifice the landscape for the purpose of an image. Number two, educate yourself about the places that you photograph. Think about the places that you go shoot. Don't just do a run through and an overall sprint 
through the places that you love to photograph, really learn about them, what makes them special, what makes them fragile. That way you can have a new level of appreciation for those places and a new respect to protect them as well. Number three, reflect on the possible impact of your actions. It may seem like a little litter here or a little footprint there, but I've seen some pretty detrimental impacts of these on landscapes, places like Grand Teton National Park. I've seen some gruesome actions out in the field that really did a lot to the landscape and really didn't allow it to hold up. I'm not gonna go into specifics here, but just knowing of what your decisions and what those implications may have on the places that we go shoot. Number four, use discretion of sharing locations. Be able to see if a location is too fragile for a lot of foot traffic. Knowing when to share geotagged location and when to not share specific location, but overall general areas that people can go shoot. Like I said earlier, I usually share a general area like this was in the southern side of Great Smoky Mountains National Park, not hey, this was this trail, this spot, I was this far off the ground when I shot this image, here's the lens I was using, here's my f-stop, ISO, all that stuff I don't share. Use a general area so you can go find that if you want, so you can explore areas and then you can use your creative vision to photograph and create your own images in the places that I share too. Really think about those things next time you're thinking about sharing locations or thinking about sharing a place that a lot of people may end up going to. Number five, know and follow rules and regulations. National parks and fragile locations don't just put up signs for the fun of it. Those signs cost money and there's a reason that they're actually there in the landscape. So it's not just like, hey, I'm gonna throw some signs here so that this photographer can't take this shot. Instead, there's probably a pretty good reason why that sign is in the landscape and you shouldn't neglect it and go against it and just completely ignore it just to get your photograph, which goes back up to number one, never sacrifice the landscape for a photograph. Number six, always follow leave no trace principles and strive to leave places better than you found them. This is huge. Leave no trace has been a big part of my photography whenever I go camp or backpack to a location. I never leave trash. I carry everything out with me that I brought in so that it looks as it did when I first got there. This also goes with never take anything out of the landscape with you. If you found a cool rock, awesome. Take a photo, document it. Don't take it with you. If you found a baby bison in Yellowstone National Park, don't take that bison into your car and drive off with it. That has major implications on nature in general. And your actions in the Leave No Trace principles can have huge impacts on nature as well. Number seven, actively promote and educate others about these principles. This is huge. The buck doesn't stop here. We as photographers are ambassadors of the places that we go shoot. We love a location based on its beauty. It has an impact us. It helps us tell a story and there's a reason we appreciate it so much. If you don't share those things, you're not spreading the word of protecting these places or telling why it's so special to you. Personal stories resonate with people and as ambassadors of nature, we need to be more cognizant of that, that our effects also affect other people and they can appreciate a landscape through our experiences and our stories as well. So take a stand, be an ambassador to a landscape, be an ambassador and an advocate for a place and sign up for Nature First, the Alliance for Responsible Photographers, an alliance of photographers all over the world that you can be a part of for free. Can't wait to see you on there guys and can't wait to see the impact, the positive impact that we can have on nature through this movement. And I also wanna thank the people who set up Nature First, it wasn't me. I just joined and I appreciate what they've done. So I wanna thank a lot of my friends and a lot of my photography colleagues who have done the work, put in the time to set up this movement that's already reaching all over the globe. So thank you to you guys and thank you to all the work that photographers are doing all around the globe to protect our natural areas.